Hi, it's Lel from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Now today is going to be a different video. I've got a piece of furniture here and I'm going to talk you through and show you it in a minute. But today's video is doing furniture up or reimagining something in your home when you don't want to spend a fortune. Now, this is what I do for a living. So I'm very fortunate. I have oh all the stamps the business pays for all the transfers i have all these things and i could get them forever in a day but if you're you know the, the world's changing and um everybody's tightening their belts you you're trying to find a way of doing up a piece of furniture that is you know really cost effective for yourself so today what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to show you in the most cost effective way things that i do i mean i don't always put everything onto a piece of furniture so uh, I'm going to be using paint. My brushes, these are just bog standard brushes. There's not, these are not expensive paint brushes. Um, you can paint a piece of furniture. When I first started painting furniture, I just used cheap uh, B&Q chip brushes. That's what I did. And I learned that, you know, they're maybe not as good and, you know, they, do, they don't last very long, but they'll do. You'll paint a piece of furniture with them. That's not a problem. My paint is Gildling paint, but you can use as long as it's furniture paint, I mean, you can't put emulsion on this. It can't be wall paint. But as long as you've got furniture paint, then you can do it because I'm not going to use a lot of different paints to to accent this piece. I'm just going to use a pack of the cheap 199 acrylic paints and I'm going to show you how to use them as well. So we're going to keep the cost to the absolute minimum. There will be some stencils, but stencils are cheap. $4.99 and you'll get a, a, a decent enough stencil and we're going to make some of our own stencils as well. The only cost I'm going to put on this piece today is some of those little mirror tiles because we're going for a really unique, really statement-y, really quality piece of furniture and I'm going to put it with an Indian sort of bohemian inspired finish but I'm going to put some of those little mirror tiles but you don't have to put them on. I think they were £10 on Amazon and we'll drop all the links to everything we're using in the description box below. So I'm going to get on and I'm just going to, this piece has been thoroughly cleaned, it's lovely and clean and I've mixed up a colour, a kind of a dusky dark pinky red as my base coat. So I'm going to take the handles off and uh, we'll get started. So it's got a removable cut, cutlery drawer in here. Some loose drawers. When your drawers are loose like this, this means that you can paint the sides of them and really go to town in it. So I was quite like a loose fitting drawer. Um, cupboards. Oh, I will be painting uh, the outside, but I will not be painting the inside on this. So three good size cupboards, three drawers. Sits on some nice legs. I have actually done a bureau of this same piece of furniture with this on it. Um, so I didn't have this bead in, so this should come out really quite nice if we add some gold accents. So I'm just going to get on and get my paint ready. When you've removed your hardware, just get a little bit of fine grit sandpaper and just rub it over there and then give it a clean. It's just that residue and dirt can build up around there. And if you're looking for an extra, no, I'm not looking for an extra smooth paint finish because I'm looking for some texture. But if you want it to be super smooth, you need to get rid of this. I'm using self-leveling, self-sealing paint from Guild Lane, so I don't need to worry that it sticks to anything. It's not super slick, the surface, so it'll st I, I know it'll stick to this perfectly well. And I'm going to be giving it two coats. My first coat is going to be this pink that I mixed up myself. So it's veering towards the red sort of scale. And how I mixed this was, I just got some red and I added a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow and a tiny little bit of purple and this was the colour that I've mixed for today. It's a nice um, sort of Indian sort of colour for a good background. So we're gonna, we, we are going to take our drawers out to paint these today um, but everything else can be painted as is. So with your whatever brushes you have to hand really, I mean as I said it doesn't have to be expensive. And this is a hair and this is a um, man-made bristle brush so and they're both quite damp which they shouldn't be when you're using self-leveling brushes nice and dry um, and I'm just going to start painting this this red well pink let's call it pink from the get-go 
um, this pink we're going to put a lot of, quite a lot of green accents on it so um, this pink shall show up a green now the look I'm going to show you today will work on anything you have in your home like uh, if you've got a piece of IKEA furniture and you just don't like it and you want to do something with it cheaply and inex inexpensively then this this look will work on IKEA furniture if you don't have a piece of furniture but you're looking to update your home on a on a tight budget you can look at places like um facebook marketplace um charity shops um people who are just advertising locally that they've got furniture you quite often get people who just give things away for free and the only reason they're giving away from free is because it's outdated and they don't like the color so that's up to you to change that paint not all paints are created equal and this is why i was you know uh, I would say this if you're going to do furniture is when you start out you don't need to have the best of paint I think one of the best most reasonable priced which I started out using it's the it, and I still love the paint and I do still use it is Rust-Oleum you'll get a tin of Rust-Oleum on Amazon and we'll drop you a link for a basic color on Amazon um, in the description box because um, Rust-Oleum chalk paint is, is brilliant, it sticks, it does exactly what you want it to do and just a cheap pack of acrylics and we'll get this done. Our piece has dried overnight, it had two good generous coats of the raspberry uh, coloured paint that I mixed up. If I was painting this um, and putting transfers and things on it, I would have given it a third coat. However, there's going to be so much detail to this that the two, two coats will be enough for you. Now, I'm going to talk about materials. So, we're going to layer on this, and there's various ways you can layer, ranging from slightly more expensive to not expensive at all. So when I go to layer it, you could, I would generally use these little mini rollers that can roll along furniture, but I used to use just a chip brush, or you can use a palette knife. Any of these things, if this is all you have, that's all you'll need. You don't need these. These, however, if you're thinking of doing more think projects in the future, I mean, we're trying to make this as cost effective as possible. I think they were, I'll get Martin to drop the link below, but they were not, these were not about a fiver, about five pounds. And I think there was four of them. I think one of them isn't here at the moment um, of these mini rollers, which are really good for this sort of kind of Indian inspired um, artwork. Um, rollers are a good thing, good investment. However, a cheap chip brush will do the exact. In fact, some of my best pieces that I've sold for quite a bit of money have just been done with a cheap chip brush because you want to put texture on it. And I'm using self leveling paint, and if you're using chalk paint, oh, it makes it so nice. The chalk paint just really good texture. Always good to have a palette knife, but you don't necessarily need one. Not the end of the world. We've painted this now. The only my recommendation would be, and it's a darker red, it's more of a brick red, there is Rust-Oleum Dura paint and it's called Brick, I think, or Fire Brick, and I'll drink, drop the link below. If I was starting a piece to do this and you're looking for a cost effective, and, and I'm by no matter saying that Rust-Oleum paint, I, I've painted many a piece with Rust-Oleum paint, it's a really good quality furniture paint, a really good chalk paint that, um, deserves more of an accolade it's just not wowsy and they don't maybe have the color range but it's a great paint so i will drop the link for that as well because you'll get that cheaply you'll get it cheaply and you can do them more than one project probably two with it in the link below um, i'm going to do most of it apart from i've got an accent color of orange here that was one i mixed up myself um, you could do with another accent color because you're going to need slightly more of that than anything else and the rest a cheap pack of acrylics now you can't paint furniture with acrylics but once you have this is self leveling self sealing so i can paint this with acrylics it won't come off it'll stay on you can paint it with chalk paint and then paint it with acrylics your base coat that's coated your furniture when the when there's when the acrylic is on the chalk paint it won't come off you seal it as normal so this is a really cheap way to get a whole variation a range of colors without having to buy multiple large tins of paint that's a really good way to save money. I'm going to be using some of these mirrored tiles, but the glue I buy, and it doesn't matter whether it's a high-end piece or, or, or a cheaper piece of furniture that I'm doing for cheaper, 
this is glue it's it's a kind of take on the no nails glue and it's a pound in the pound shop and it's the glue i would use for everything it doesn't matter that it's a pound it is so good so this kind of really strong glue invest in that it's a pound in the uk i mean in america and other places i'm not sure if you go to a dollar store whether they have this sort of equivalent but have a look for it it's a it's a really strong glue i have now i i've had i have these i've got loads of them but acrylic paint markers are fabulous for doing detail on furniture especially if your brushwork isn't just quite up to par um these a tenner and they're a good investment to have because you can do multiple pieces of furniture but you don't necessarily need these if you're good just use these and a fine artist paintbrush. I'm going to be putting some of these mirrored tiles on and you don't have to. This is where the expense comes in on this piece of furniture. Where there's a transfer would be £40. I've spent, I think these were £10 on Amazon. They're tiny little mirrored tiles. There's big ones and smaller ones and this is what they look like. Um, I'm going to be, that's going to be my bougie element to the piece. Makeup sponges. They're really good for stencils. You can wash them. Don't don't be wasteful. I just, I mean, you can see them. I just wash them and use them again multiple times, and I keep on using them. So one pack is forever, and they lie all over the place. And I just put them in a tub once I've washed them with my brushes and use them all again. Um, you may need just some artist brushes. None of these are particularly expensive artist brushes. Just some artist brushes, and the last thing is just. A couple of cheap stencils you'll get them on Amazon any craft store has cheap stencils just some cheap stencils cheap as chips I mean they're not not expensive not a great big furniture stencil at 30 pounds nothing like that just some cheap craft stencils that's all you need because I'm putting the mirror tiles on and this is an expense that you probably won't go to if you're just wanting to do it for and I'm going to try and total up the price of what it's cost me to do this piece at the end um, I've used very little paint, which, you know, so far to do, to get it to this stage. I have bought this relief outliner in gold because when I stick my mirror tiles on, um, onto my piece, I'm going to want to line them. I don't, don't want them stuck on there. That looks a little bit cheap, but you don't have to use these and you can see parts where I'm putting them on, but it, it doesn't necessarily need them. And that's, these are the only expensive things. I think this was three pounds. 49 on Amazon again, but you'll get this from any art retailing store. Um, I used to have it in loads of different colours. It's really good for stained glass. It's good for drawing outline on glass where if you've got, if your piece has got glass and you want to paint it in. But remember, if you're going to paint it in and use water down acrylics for a watercolour look, you have to seal inside it. So a top coat will be necessary. But that's pretty much what I'm going to be using today. I'm not going to introduce, introduce anything new to this mix. This is it. You'll need some water. And, and as I said, I've got a kind of contrasting paint. It's not too contrasting. I'm just going to be popping this orange um, onto it to layer it with the orange. I'm keeping what's left over of my original raspberry just to the side in case I need it for anything and I want to mix it into any colour. I, I use old plates. And this has obviously had acrylic on it before because acrylic generally doesn't come back off things. So make sure it's an old plate, an old piece of cardboard. I use anything to mix piece of paper doesn't matter just to mix up these because we're going to mix these to shades that we want to use and you need very little for stenciling so this is why these are unique and ideal right so I'm going to get on and move my water and I'm going to start showing you how I would start putting building up layers the sort of Indian inspired work that I do that is really popular has just multiple multiple layers and that's all it is and you just have to put an audio book on and just keep going because it's just layering and I'm going to show you panel per panel so that you get a rough idea how to complete a whole piece. So we're going to ignore these pieces first because these are tricky. It's better if this was just flat. That's why I'm saying cheap Ikea furniture is brilliant for this look. I'm going to have to work out myself what to do with these as we go. So we'll start, I think, with putting our colour, um, our accent colour around the piece first so we can let that dry. So these are our alternatives. Cheap cheap slightly cheap slightly more expensive and i'm going to show you what looks they achieve so the brush first and you just you're not going to the edges and you are just 
starting to build up layers of colour and I want some of this orange underneath here so no rhyme or reason I'm kind of going round in a square here but that's how it looks with a chip brush this is how it looks with a roller rollers give you much more inter interesting texture so I quite like the rollers this gives you more solid palette knife again it gives you texture so you're gonna go like that that's how they all look when put onto the piece and it's really up to you which one you decide that you want I'm gonna do it now I've started this one I'm, I'm gonna have to do a sort of mix of all of them now and um, just so it doesn't look a bit weird I'll run my roller over this and see if I can get a little bit more sort of texture going so I'm going to go on and I'm just going to accent the front with the orange and then we'll move on to the next steps. Well, I've rifled through my little acrylic set here and this sap green, I'm probably not going to adjust it at all. So you just squeeze some out. And literally, we want to keep the initial colour underneath. You want it to be that it's still quite, it commands the, the, the main sort of colour. Everything else is just window dressing, so, but we don't want to eradicate too much of the raspberry colour. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill round about it with the sap green. Now this is going to be too big because I don't want it to touch on up amongst the, up, up against the orange because you're trying to separate your sort of colours. So I think the best way to introduce some green is just by using a palette knife. And just putting it along. This is going to give it really, it's, this is going to give it loads of interest. It's going to give it lots of texture. It's not going to be too heavy. This is all we're doing with this sap green. Um, now, at this stage in time, if you're doing this yourself, you're probably going to be freaking out. Everybody's going to be looking at it going, this is such a mess. But this, this is a look that takes, it takes time and it takes lots of layers and you're just gonna have to be patient because it's gonna look a mess for quite a while. It doesn't start to look good until you start to put the stenciling on and then people can see where you're going, but don't be put off if somebody's watching you do this and saying, oh, it's, don't worry about it. You just have to be bold. So I'm gonna go on now and I'm gonna separate, I'm gonna go round my piece, all the sections in between, even this little band down with this green. It's really, um, all the sort of edges that I've done, but I'm now going to get a makeup sponge and just dip it in the same sort of luminous green. And I just, and the reason for this is if you kind of look at it the way I look at it, you've got your red, your raspberry, your orange and your raspberry, but you want to break up this little line of raspberry here with, with just some of this green. So that I'm not touching all of it. I'm just kind of like going down applying it some areas thick, you know, like in a sort of distressed fashion, just kind of like this, just a little bit to break up that and a wee bit, you can go a wee bit heavier in the corners if you've not got into those, like here um, and here. Now, I will say at this juncture, I understand that this is, this is um, Indian inspired, but you can swap out any of these colours. So if you were looking for paler, you could start with a really light blue, put a pink on top, put a lemon. You know, there's no stopping you. It's just, it's just if it's not your colour choice, because to be honest with you, this green wouldn't be my first choice. But I know that when I'm looking at lots of Indian art, I've been doing my sort of research on truck art. This green features quite heavily, along with a raspberry, along with an orange. So I'm trying to be quite true to sort of the, the, the Indian painting style. So I'm going to go on and do round my, drawer, my, my doors now. I'm not doing round the drawers, just round the doors. And then we'll move on to getting some of the design work done. So from my set, I'm going to be using a deep blue and a light blue. And I'm going to try and make myself a blue that I'm happy with by adding a really bright yellow. And we should get a sort of, let's see what sort of colour I sort of, I'm looking for, I'll know it when I see it, 
I'm looking for adding towards ooh, a tealy sort of turquoisey sort of color. I'm happy with that. Now, just be mindful when you're mixing colours that you know what you mixed. It's fine in this sort of look because it doesn't all have to be exactly, you know, the same because, you know, this pack can be a slightly different shade from up there. But for the front, keep it all the same colour. Now, I don't, I don't like doing a sort of stenciled on when it's carved like this. So, it doesn't always end up perfect so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to shade this out in this sort of greeny colour. Now you've got many options here, you can apply it with a sponge, you can apply it with a brush, you can do it with a roller, you can do it with the, the palette knife but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this big brush and let's see if we can get some nice sort of sort of more sort of texture, yeah something like this. and just sort of feather it down. Um, if you feel it's going too heavy at the top, start at the bottom, the next stroke. And that instantly is gonna give us something to build on. There's not, stenciling onto these sorts of areas is always tricky. They always end up looking wonky, so, you know, Let's just try and deal with this straight away and I'll be happier. This is where the mirrors are going to go because I'm going to be happier with this once I know where this is going. I'm just going to pull some of this paint off here. It's a little bit heavy. So I'm going to go on and do my third um, cupboard door and then we'll move on to the next part. There's lots of different mediums out there like salt wash or texturizing paste, glass beads, you name it, that'll put texture on. And then because this surface is really wavy, I think the best we can hope for is to just put some texture on it and work with what we've got. So I've mixed up a mustardy paint. I'm just using a makeup sponge. And what I've done is I've just added a little bit of baking soda because we're doing this on the cheap. We're not buying salt wash. We're not doing anything like that. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of texture onto here because it's the best we can hope for when it's this sort of raised surface. I would generally hand paint onto this and I might still do it, but this is all I'm going to do on here, just over the top of our blue like that, just to give it a little bit of something, a little bit more than, to, to kind of take it away that that sort of kind of squareness, that the shaping and everything, and it gives it a little bit more depth. So I'm just going to do this on the middles of each of one of these cabinets. In the spirit of using what we have, I tend to, to work on a side, a side, a side, and a side, and separate them all up. As you can see, when I used the green, I used all of the green. I've got a little bit of this texturized paint left, so I don't want to waste it. So I'm just going to pick out some parts that's going to give it a little bit of interest and a little bit of texture. Nothing too much, just to use up what I've got. Maybe a little rub over the hinges, um, just like this, just to use up what we've got. So I'm going to use this up and then we'll get to the next part. So next we're going to do is we're going to move on to the drawers. Um, I have this stencil here. I folded this bit, but make sure when you've got stencils that they're, they're kind of go on sort of accurate. There was a larger part here than here, which means it wouldn't have been centered. Ask me how I know that one. So I'm going to go like this and put it central on my piece. Happy with, happy with that and I've got a tiny little bit of paint. I've offloaded this much onto this cardboard so that I know there's not too much and I'm just going to start swirling around. I'm, as you can see, I'm not using a fancy stencil brush. I'm just using a paintbrush. I'm trying to make sure that you don't have to go out and buy anything difficult. I think the mirrored tiles is the only thing in this piece that is a little bit out of the ordinary but even still it's not the price of a of a um you know a transfer or buying expensive stamps it's still going to be just check it yep so i'm happy with that moving on to my next one 
And again, I'm just using a tiny little paint, amount of paint which I'm offloading. And that's the secret to good stencil. Now, I don't want this one to be too overpowering because we're gonna we're gonna um, paint over the top of this with acrylic pens. So this is why it's easier to take your drawers down so that you're not working at an angle and you, you know, your pens won't run out the same if you do this way. Here, I'm need a tiny little bit more paint on this. Just in a nice circular motion. Moving your hands round and round in the stencil helps um, position it. So I'm just going to do this. We'll let it dry and then we'll get on to decorating each drawer. Using stencils is a really good crutch, especially if you're going to use something like this over the top of them. An inexpensive way um, to make something look like it's got maximum input. So if you look at the sort of colours we've done on here, we're kind of try and recreate this in this work here. So we've got the yellow, um, we've got the green, orange, I'm going to add a pink and maybe blue and maybe even a purple, but let's just start with the yellow. So these pens, when you get them from you, shape them up and down. You need to do it for quite a while. And then what you do is you push the nib down like this, which releases any air. And then this, the paint comes out. Now this is the fine line side, but you can flip it over to this side which gives it a thicker line so I think for this part we'll flip it over you do get a bit painty um, and we know it's working we're working down which means the paint is running down into it and every so often just give it a wee shake so the first shape we're going to go around is this center and this is where it gets really quite therapeutic because it's just like coloring in and this one as well and this is where you just kind of like release your inner Picasso I mean you can do something like like this and just really give it a bit of pattern I'm trying to go quite quick because I'm sure you you get the concept so that's the inside done then we're going to take our green because this matches the bottom half. How are we going to do our green? So there's a demarcation line separating them. So I'm just going to go around the whole thing. Like this. And the same on this side here. I'm just working two at a time because then you get the, the sort of concept all the way around center and all the way around back to here um, obviously I need to do that line there and you're just now filling in with all the colors that you want to put in this piece I'm going to do something like this in the center and put some pink just a little hint of it and maybe a pink dot at the end here in between those little shapes and I'm going to use white because I want it to stand out half of these white and half of them a different color so we'll start here and we're just doing over just to kind of really highlight that it's paisley pattern and white gives it a nice sort of impact um, on this side I'll obviously do the side as well so that you get an idea of two at once and the whole piece really is going to be created by stamping, layering, and designing. And then what you can do is, and you can make this as complicated or as simple 
as you want. Um, I tend to, when it's just me by myself, things can get incredibly complicated and end up taking me for ages. But if you're not in any rush and you've got the time, why, why not? I'm just going to colour in where this sort of fan shape was green. I'm going to make mine orange. And I think I'm going to take black now, which is a bit bold. And I'm going to do something like a twirly line. That fills up this space. And catch it up at this end. So it's just a twirly line. I mean, this is how simple it is. And I'll maybe do this as well, just to tie in my black in between my pink. So this is looking more what I'm looking for now. So you just need to go on and do, and it'll take you a while to get all your drawers done. Um, I'm going to finish one drawer and show you what I do next um, and do the rest of my drawers just off camera. Okay. So I've finished the paisley pattern and I'm just trying to work out where my mirrors are going to go. So I'm going to put my mirrors at the kind of twirly bit there and one on each side. So we'll glue down the, the, the pieces that are going to go in here first. You just need a tiny, tiny bit of glue. And it doesn't matter if it kind of squeezes over the edges a little bit because we're going to cover that up. Take your needle around it like that. This is where it could get potentially get quite messy. You want them secure enough that if the furniture's bumped from the front, it's got this lip on it, so it shouldn't be too bad. But it is a high traffic area I draw, so you need to make sure that there's plenty of glue on them. And glue that one on there like that. And as I said, don't worry about that little bit of over kind of gluing. Now next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue these ones on here in the sort of center here and this one needs to be up about here again plenty of glue but not too much I just want to make sure that's kind of semi level there wipe your fingers and then what you need to do is this product which is a relief outliner this is where you have to be kind of careful I would practice with it for a minute first and don't over squeeze it and all you're going to do over the top of your glue is just do a line of this it's going to help your um, mirror bed down and make it not look like it's just stuck out in the middle of nowhere but it's also going to help with gluing it on. I could have been tidier there. I'm conscious I wasn't talking, I'm concentrating. Um, I'm going to go on and I'm going to put this outliner on them all. And on this side one, I'm just going to paint a wee flower around it and outline it with this and I'll come back and I'll show you. So I've, I've finished all my little mirrors. Putting the gold around them kind of embeds them on and makes them safer for when they're bumped. And all I've done to get that sort of shape is when I put it on, I've just flicked it out to give it a sort of kind of star sort of flower shape. Um, I've done that all the way along and I've put some more of this little gold around here because we're going to be putting gold around the drawers and things. So this drawer is complete and I'll go on and I'll do the other two drawers now. So we're moving on a pace here but there's a couple of things I want to do. I should have maybe have done this first but I didn't. I want to just get this stencil and I've offloaded it and I I've mixed up a sort of grey blue which is going to be the main focus for all of the stenciling and all I'm doing is I'm just running it around just randomly I'm not I understand that the glass um, mirrors are kind of like in the way now so I'm just kind of like 
giving it a little bit of depth which I should have probably thought of before I, I did this and I've done the other two cupboards and the other fronts and what I'm, I'm just replicating everything that I've done so far on this side so I'm just kind of making sure that my brush is really quite dry and I'm just going along a piece just giving it a little bit of depth just another little bit of interest I should maybe, when you're layering things, you should think about how much you're layering up and I should maybe have thought this. Now, when I stood back to look at the piece as a whole, I decided that this pink is throwing it way off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this blue because I don't have this colour in a paint pen and I'm just going to eradicate completely the centres of each one of these um, Paisley pattern shapes and just painting out that pink because the pink doesn't work with the piece as a whole and anywhere else I've got pink I'm just going to paint in with a paintbrush so you need a small artist brush for this it's just that the pink there isn't anything else that sort of bright luminous pink really and it just from a distance it just threw it right off so we'll just get rid of that and I've done it on the other drawers as well. So I'm just going to do these other two and then we'll move on to the rest of the piece. You'd be surprised what you can do with one stencil if you're doing something like this you can have it this way you can turn it this way you can use it multiple times and I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm wanting to have this like this like this I'm just trying to look at the other side to make sure I get it right um, yeah so holding it down making sure you've not got too much paint on your brush we're going to use this this works better with the drawer out so I've removed the drawer just to make it a little bit easier I'm just going to stencil along here uh, I've, can you see this little yellow line that I've put on with an acrylic paint? That, that's how I know where I'm kind of going. And if you give yourself these little mar markers and indicators, then that way you've kind of near enough got it right. Here. And my last one. Here. I'll use a little bit more paint on my brush. And the next thing I'm going to do with this stencil is I'm going to turn it round and use it the opposite way to fill in the negative space. Because the Indian spire, it's, it's so busy, there's so much going on, so much to see that you've got to kind of try and... So I'm just going to do this here. This is how you, if you were putting on a wall, you measure it up with this little dot, but we obviously you don't, you're ignoring that. Here. And then on the side parts, it's just so I can pull it all together, bring it to right to the edge and we can start up a bit. And this is just all sort of kind of guesswork from now on in where you're kind of positioning it because the stencil's got so much paint on it that you can't really tell. And I've just repeated this, the same design. I've, I've turned it round on the two sides and I've put it the upside down way in the middle and I'll show you in a minute. I'm just get this done. Yeah, and the bottom part, I just turned it up this way. You can see I'm hardly, I'm not very often um, putting more paint on my brush a little goes a long way all the way along let's check what I did on this side I think that's all I did on that side because I was getting kind of close to the hinge and on this side here I used it right in the middle like this and I took it to 
to here on this on the other on the other side. And here. And here. And I think pretty much that's as recreated as the same as the other side. Now what I did next was I got this stencil here. Yeah, this way, just make sure you put them on the same way about right to the external edge. And I was only really focusing on here. going to get messy fingers. So I'm just going to show you this so far. So that's how that looks. Just a hint of another shape and I put it round here and here as well. So I'll go on and do that and then we'll, we'll look at the piece at the front as a whole. So that's the front uh, done and I'm happy with it. And now I'm going to show you how to recreate the sides. So it's pretty much the same thing as we did before. Now what I've done is I've put this blue border around here and I still have that to fix. So on camera I'll just show when you paint these like under rims it's good to be down lower than your piece to just make sure just in case anybody ever bends down and goes under it you know that it's all done um, properly. So uh, that's all I'm doing here. Just make sure your line's tidy. Need a fine artist brush for these kind of jobs. Um, so I can neaten that up in a minute, but you know where I was going with that. So that's that bit part done. I'm happy with that. The next thing you need is your little roller again. And you're going to roll on some orange texture, just like the front. It's just slightly different. It's just different. You just have to have fun and make it up as you go along. Now, what I do is um, I take a photo of one side when I've completed it so that I've got a reference point to um, uh, look at for when I do the next, um, the next side. It just makes it a little bit easier. So we're doing something like that on the front. Martin's just, I mean, there's there's the photo of the other side, just so I'm kind of, you know, going, that's how I do it, just so that it makes them the same. It doesn't matter, there's little differences, but you want them kind of generally the same. So again, with the orange, we're just distressing it with no real thought. And what I did was I ran my orange in a square, sorry about the noise, down here. Now, I'm just going to, off camera quickly, just let that dry and we'll do the next part. Taking the same cheap stencil that I used on the front, I am just going to do something a bit like, no, make sure I get it right, a bit like this. And I'm just doing these, I'll do one side and then I'll go and do the other one off camera. Um, I'm just doing these, same, same deal, you know, don't overload your brush too much. And just kind of randomly, it's, you're probably going to do more, you know, where it's all going to go. But this is the look I like. I like it being a little bit kind of, you know, organic. So we're going to do that and we're going to recreate that on that side. But the top, we're going to put this. Be kind of mindful where your, your stencil is underneath. I'm just going to put a bit more paint on my brush, making sure I'm holding it in a swirly kind of motion, round and round and round in a circle. And I'm going to do this, this same pattern on the bottom as well. So when I stop doing this one, I'll go off camera and I'll do the top and bottom so our sides are done. Um, I've got this one here which I'm going to go around the edges for, so I'll always, I'll do that off camera as well. I'm conscious that it's a little bit like, you know, how many stencils can you see somebody apply? So I'll go off and I'll do this and I'll make it all the same. So we've done 
everything sort of all matches up. We've got a blue there, a blue there. I was just talking to Martin there. See this little part here where I've touched over with the blue? The great thing about this sort of Indian look, if I was doing a perfect piece, that would stress me out and I'd have to go and paint it all in. But the great thing about this sort of vibe is you don't need to worry about things like that. It's it's all part of its charm and it's a good look if you're starting out, you know, this kind of, you know, light and easy. So I've got another stencil here. This is a good big lotus flower. I really like this one. This one, this one was a cheap stencil, but it has been used and used and used. It's a, it's a good one, this one. Um, and I'll get Martin to drop a link. This one is out of a set of lots of stencils, which I use over and over again. And I've already talked about them, but they're cheap as chips and you use them again and again and again. And I know you should really look after all your things. And I do have it stamps, etc. But, you know, my stencils are just washed, sit by the side of my paint sink and let to dry and then stick them up beside a cabinet that I have over there. I mean, I don't go to great lengths. They, they, they're, they're really easy because they're plastic and plastic, you know, is very, um, you know, it's just not very environmentally friendly, but it'll last and last and last and last many, 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 many times. So I'm just going doing the same technique with this and then I'm going to let this dry and then I just use some fine markers just to colour in some detail on this and I've realised that I haven't put any green accents on this side so I'm just going to do that now, show you that now quickly just so it matches the other side. I should have had them on before I put the stencil on but we'll just do something a little bit daring. So I've got my sap green that's on the front and I'm just going to apply some to my palette knife and we're just going to stick some green in here round about the pattern I've already done. Trail some along there and you can see how look this is the tube we started with I mean it's it's done a piece with you know it's good. I'm gonna put some of that there maybe some up there and there. Just little bits here and there so I'm just going to dry this off and then we'll come back and we'll do the detail on this. And we're nearly, nearly done now. Just before um, Martin stops the camera, in the spirit of not spending any money on, I normally put new handles on pieces, generally. What I've done with these is I've just painted them in gold. Um, this section up here is gold as well. And I'll show you me doing a bit of that in a minute. It just follows from this line here and this is gold. But I'll dry this off and we'll get, we'll get going. So this is where it's handy to have your photo of your other side in front of you so that you know what you're, exactly what you're doing. So I, all I did was I went round some of it and this is up to you. And to be honest with you, the pens are optional. If you don't have them, I wouldn't rush out to buy them. Um, same with the little mirrors. You don't need the little mirrors, just do little circles of colour um, with your paints. It's just because I have them and it's a, it's a quick and easy way just to kind of um, uh, make something look much, you know, like slicker. But you could do all this with a paintbrush. I mean, that's the thing about this. I'm not, we are trying to do this piece on a budget. And at the end, I'm going to kind of total up what I think it's cost. Now, I probably could be doing a better job with this, but I'm trying to hold the phone in one hand and uh, do this in the other. The next thing I did was I think I got the yellow. And the yellow I just put in between here like this. And I shook the yellow earlier and it went all over my top. Um, I wasn't really, really that chuffed about it, but it happened. And a little bit of a zigzag in here. And I'm just making these shapes up. I mean, that's the thing. You can make it as involved or as uninvolved as you like. Uh, that is down to you. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to do this one like the other side. And... Before I do that, I'll just stop this a minute and I'll show you. I just had my gold guild and a tiny little lattice brush. And all I did was I did this. Now, in general, I would give this two coats. But because we're going for that sort of kind of distressed, I'm just giving it one. Make sure that doesn't drip on my clothes. So that's all I did for that, to bring that detail out. And then as I did on the front, I just got the gold. And I just kind of run it into places that I, you know, like I wanted a little bit of a kind of gold highlight. There you go. Just no rhyme and reason, just in the corners and the edges and 
how I'm going to fix this little booby down here is just do this, run the gold along there. And um, I'll go on and finish that lotus flower and then we will be onto the front again and we'll be finished. So the piece is finished. Um, what to say about this piece? I really wanted to do paint a piece of furniture that was worthy in recession. Uh, you know, when you're penny pinching and you want to do something really nice in your home and everything seems so costly and to use all the things I use as a furniture artist in a business, I mean, that's easy. You don't, you, I've got all these things. So it was to really prove you, you can knock it out of the park literally for not a lot of money. Now, rough figures go like this uh, with just the paint and everything I'd done to this because I had some of these items and all I've done is I've calculated how much paint I've used. Remember, you start with your can of paint and you use your acrylics to blend all the rest. The acrylic paint costs £1.50. Um, and I reckon all in for paint and everything completed for me, this has been £10. Now, it has got the little mirrors on it, but they're optional. You don't have to put those on. Um, I think I counted them up. I can't remember how many. Not many. Um, Martin's doing 10 behind the camera there. Uh, he's keeping me right on the mass. I'm not very massy. So um, those were put on it. We reused the hardware, um, the stencils. If you wanted to go out and start from scratch and you wanted to do a few pieces, your overall outlay is going to be about £40. It cost me £10 because I already had all the stencils. However, stencils range from £5 to about £15. And the pack that I was telling you about, which Matt is going to drop the link to uh, below the Indian ones uh, were seven pounds and there's how many Martin in the pack? Stencils. How many? Eight. There's eight stencils in that pack for seven pounds. And you can use them over and over and over and over again with multiple color choices. So if you spend your 40 pounds, you buy one can of paint, you buy your acrylic and you start off with your stencils, your little gold relief, which is three pounds on Amazon. By the time you get that together, you can then go on and probably create another three pieces of furniture depending on their size this had two good coats as well i mean it wasn't scrimped on how you know it was painted all the colors and accents have all been done by acrylics i used some chalk markers which i already had as well so you would have to outlay that but the 40 pounds should cover it that 40 pounds enables you to do multiple pieces instead of if you you do a like for like comparison and say a transfer is going to cost me 40 pounds 40 pounds and you can do one thing and you haven't even included your paint 40 pounds and you've got multiple stencils you can use again and you've, you've got the variety of and having one can but you can mix different colors with acrylic well it's a, it's a no-brainer i shouldn't really be telling you this considering how much i sell my pieces for uh, but i don't normally do it like this you know i don't mind you know throwing money at furniture because you know that's that's how I sell them. But this piece, when you see it finished, you're going to be absolutely like, it's it's a it's a beauty. I'm really, really thrilled with it. And as I said, it's cost us about a tenner. It's not incredibly hard work. There's nothing challenging in it. It's a bit of stenciling and everybody can stencil. And I'm going to be starting to do some videos on techniques soon. I'm going to do one furniture video a week and one on techniques. So we'll deep dive into all things like stencils, transfers, inlays, sanding, cleaning, you name it, whatever. Um, if you've got something specific as well that you're really wanting to do, just let me know. So I think I've said, I've done an awful lot of talking. I think that I've said everything. I'm well from Made by Marley. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for all the really kind comments I've been getting recently. It's actually overwhelming. Um, so please like, share, leave me a message, subscribe and all of that good list and um, I'll see you again another day.